So here's what I'm going to do here, just to start our testing. I, I'm going to focus on U.S. futures. Four futures, I usually stay in a 15-minute chart. It's intraday enough, but also remember, we trade crowd behavior. By definition, we need a crowd. In 15 minutes on a U.S. futures, we have enough crowd for our patterns to surface. If we don't have a crowd, there will be patterns on the chart, but the likelihood of them being useless is higher. We do need a crowd. All right, now, okay, first of all, I want the test to be ending today. Okay, and let's say January 1st is good, but I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go back four years. So this is, okay, four and a half years, a little bit more, four years and 10 months. Good, that's a, that's a large sample size for us to be able to, draw some conclusions. One thing I want to avoid is to try to fine tune it to too much. I'm just focusing on what really matters. So this, in this test, I'm just gonna use market order. I am aware of the fact that there will be slippage. Market order, there will be slippage. 6,000 trades, that's a lot of ticks that I'm gonna lose. You will see after a work is done, that I'm starting with the least potentially successful system. So I'm giving up a lot of ticks, in other words. I want to see what I get if I don't worry about the details too much. So market order, using market orders is part of that decision. Here in this area, this is actually important. So order sets, okay. So I have to decide how many contracts I want to use in this test and what those contracts should be doing. Should I be trailing them? What should happen while, once I'm in the trade? I am starting with a very, very simple situation. So the edge contains two ingredients. One is the percentage of trades, my trades, which are winners or losers. We call this accuracy. The other one is the win-loss ratio, which means what's the proportion of my average win compared to the average loss. The, if I put this in an equation, then I will end up with a number. And if this number is bigger than zero, then I have a positive edge. And here's the thing. If I just want to test for the robustness of a strategy, just an initial idea, is it worth spending any time on? Then I just want this to be one. So two divided by two is one. Three divided by three is one. So the win-loss ratio is one, which means that I'm going to enter a trade. I'm going to put this target here. Let's say it's a long trade. I'm going to put the stop here. And what I'm going to say that I'm going to use the same distance. And all I'm testing for is which one will get hit first. No trailing. That can come later. I just need to start one simple test. Very important concept. 1R means that this distance and this distance, A and B, is the same distance. So it's a 1R trade. Reward and risk equals. If I do this, since this is 1, this part of the equation will tell me if it makes sense to delve any further into this research. Does it make sense? Basically, I'm eliminating, I'm not worrying about this part now. I want to know if I get a positive number. And mathematically obvious from this point on, if this number on this side is even just slightly bigger than 50%, I'm already a profitable trader. So this is what I'm doing. And this is how I'm going to set up the details. So here's we're gonna, what we're going to do. In the second order set, I'm going to enter contract size zero. So there will be nothing in the second order set. I'm just going to enter one contract. And this is the next one. Where should my profit be? I'm going to set it to three. Three ATRs from the entry. And my stop loss will be the same number. 
3 divided by 3 is 1. So this is a 1R trade. There is no second contract. And an important detail, I don't want to trail anything. All I want is just to, just to run some tests and see which one will get hit first. 6,000 times I'm going to enter the market. How many times is my stop going to get hit first or my target going to get hit first? That will give me a rough idea of whether I should start fine-tuning anything or just throw it out the window. Therefore, I'm not going to customize anything else. I'm not going to customize the time. I could set the time just to trade the morning session or whatever. No, I'm going to trade 24-7. So I'm going to put the ugly, the good, the bad, and the ugly in the same basket. I don't care. So there will be rotten apples in the basket. I can filter them out later if I want to. So understand the power of this, of this test. Even if with the rotten apples, the test results are pretty good, that's one step towards confidence. Let's see what else is here. Okay, these settings, I'm not gonna change the Keltner, no need to, these are, these are the same settings all the time. Let me see, chop filter, no, everything is the same. I'm not using higher time frame filter. Now, one important setting here, the number of signals. I do need to think about this a little bit. This is just as important, I think, as the number of, uh, as using a trailing stop or something. So this is, this is materially important to my test. Right now, I want to take the first five signals, max, one, two, three, four, five, and then anything else, the colors, of course, they not, do not matter for a mathematical algorithm. If I want to send myself an email with every trade, no, so these settings do not matter, okay? One thing matters, if I'm in a position, do I want to exit the position at the session close? Assumes that we're kind of intraday. But remember one thing, we're not intraday because we don't have enough money for overnight. Not having enough money on the account, having a small account is not reason to be intraday. Having a small account is reason not to trade. So we are not intraday because we don't have more money, but we're intraday because we have found an edge. Four years, four instruments, 15 minute chart. You can imagine that's gonna be a large number of trades. Market order, one hour trades, I'm focusing on the accuracy. The real question is, are we gonna get more than 50% accuracy? If yes, that warrants further work. If not, well, then we'll, we'll talk about it. Let's see what happens. And this is BTX, lightning speed. So there are four iterations. You can see it here because I'm not optimizing for anything. It's just four instruments over four years. That's still a lot of trades. I'm on an i7 here, so perhaps not the fastest computer in the world, but it's fast enough. Look at this. Not even a minute, like 30 seconds, we have altogether 9,000 trades, 9,344 trades altogether on four instruments. This is the power of BTX. All four instruments show a number bigger than 1.0. I said enough already. We could end the session right here. But let's continue. Look at the percentage profitable. Even the combined results are 52. This is a very respectable start. One other thing I might want to look at. So this is the gain, but what is the pain? So I want to look at the equity curve. Again, this is a very rough first test, but I do want to look at the equity curve. Well, on the NQ, it's a definite yes. So this is a pretty good equity curve. I'm not expecting the same thing on all four necessarily. So let's look at the YM. 99% um, green. The RTY, I'm waiting for some ugliness here. Okay, well, this is the most ugliness we might get today. Look at this. Hard times, yes, flat market, yes, but one strength of our strategy, algorithmic strategy, the chop filter. We do do our best to filter out flat markets, sideways markets. And RTY spent a lot of time sideways. I know a 50 minute chart is a small chart, but still every, with every trade, every setup, every signal, 
the algorithm did filter out as much as possible the suboptimal triggers. And I think that's the reason why even the bad times, the hard times are not tragic, just flat. And when things get going, then our strategy shines. Okay, the ES, dramatic drawdowns. So this is just the initial step. Again, it's decidedly rough. This can be improved. Just one obvious example is a, instead of market order, I might just use a limit order and then give back less of the slippage and perhaps some other stuff. Oh, trailing, obviously, locking in profits. You remember, this is a strategy where either the target got hit or the stop got hit. So by tightening the stop, by using smart trailing stops, these results can be improved. But why don't we stop right here and just a couple of ideas just to close this off, to wrap it up. Why is this so good? Simply because of a decade of work that we've put in it. And also because this is a strategy that capitalizes on crowd behavior. So this strategy is robust because it analyzes crowd behavior. You can play around with limit orders instead of market orders. Then you can use the time filter, for example, limit the time of the trades to certain times of the day, play around with that. You can limit the number of trades in a trend. Yes, we mentioned that. And then later you can uh, play around with some risk management settings. Risk management was switched off in this test, you see, because I didn't want to introduce more variables. So we need to crunch the numbers so everybody can really understand the power of this tool. Mm -hmm.